I just want to make uh, a few observations with regard to what has happened um, after and the arrest as well as the aftermath of the arrest of Jack Murray and uh, Ruki and uh, Father Praveen. I think a couple of questions are in order here. I mean, the first question that I want to ask is that, you know, how come these three people were arrested but the person who is supposed to have come from Switzerland or wherever it is reported to start off the LTT all over again, how come that person is not arrested? Where is that person? You know, given that we have a fairly significant presence of the military in the north at the present moment. Also, given that the defeat of the LTT five years ago was arguably very comprehensive, how come within a matter of five years they can come back again and present such a dire threat to the sovereignty of this country? Third question I want to ask is this, who is making policy for that? Surely the president really doesn't want to express arrogant dismissal of the proceedings of the Human Rights Council in Geneva and arrest three human rights defenders at this point in time. He knows that it is probably the strongest resolution on Sri Lanka in an international forum. What, what is this? In football, they talk about an own goal, as it were. Is he trying to prove the case that is contained in the accusations about the government of Sri Lanka? Or does he know what is or does he not know what is happening? Is someone else making the decisions? And are they making those decisions because they don't know about foreign policy? Or they know and they want to send out a particular message? Is this done out of ignorance? Or is this done deliberately? We need to know because it's extremely damaging. Very damaging indeed. Thirdly, I mean the policy issue extends. I mean, as was pointed out, the foreign ministry has put out a statement talking about release on bail. Indeed, it is ironic because the Minister of Foreign Affairs is a professor of law. He ought to know better. It, it's really quite absurd when you keep going on. And one thing, of course, is very clear, I think, and that's the point that needs to be hammered forth. We're all traitors. We're all threats to the sovereignty of this country. Why? Because we tell the truth. Because we go and find out the information that constitutes the counter-narrative to the propaganda that is spewed out on the state-controlled press as information. That is why they were taken. There's no other reason for it. This government dislikes civil society groups such as ours because we dare to tell a different story. Because we dare to tell the truth. Civil society has a role to play in any functioning democracy. And that role to play that they have to play is not that of victims of government repression. Furthermore, if Sri Lanka is fully conscious of its obligations, duties and responsibilities, as a member of the international community, it would recognize that there are covenants, declarations, in respect of the role of human rights defenders. They are pledged to uphold them. We have every right to collect information about what is happening in our country. We have every right to take that information and use it in the multilateral forum, which is the United Nations Human Rights comes. There is nothing that suggests that that is treacherous or indeed that is in some way subverting the sovereignty of the country. The next question I want to raise is, is that, you know, is it going to be the case now that the justification for the maintenance of this repressive piece of legislation called the Prevention of Terrorism Act the military presence in the North East, and a whole lot of curtailments of fundamental rights is going to be that the LTT is regrouping. Every one of us, I suspect, is now going to be tainted in some way with having spoken to, or spoken about, or seen with someone who they can claim to be LTT. 
And I submit to you, in my opinion, that this is going to be the justification for the institutionalized militarization that we have and the persistence of anti-terrorism legislation, which is a cancer on democracy and fundamental rights in the country. So I think we do have a major challenge coming out of all of this. The message is very clear. This is the way of the future. This is what's going to continue into the future. And every single arrest, every single threat and intimidation is meant to serve as, in, as a deterrent against anyone trying to provide information, use that information as part of the counter narrative. We have a government, end of the day, has discovered that fear and demoralization of people is probably also a good formula to stay in. 